Get everyone, BH and Dad here. We're going to do the in depth review of this HP ProBook X360 435G7. Now, this is our 13 inch business class two in one computer, and what does that mean? It means it can flip the screen around and then become a tablet. And they have included a HP Pro Pen, which means you can actually do some note taking as well, as well as drawing. So that's pretty sweet there. And of course, as you can see, it is the touch screen as well. Now, this is a mid-range business class laptop for HP, being the ProBook series, which don't be fooled by that. They've got a lot of nice business features in this and as well as the build quality, they did not skimp on that as well too. So I'm pretty impressed by that, but we'll slowly get through that. We'll also have a peek of internals of this computer later in the video. So stick around for that, as well as doing the temperature and noise of this computer here and also battery life there. Now, I'm going to quickly first say off a big thank you to HP Australia for providing this unit here so I can actually do the review. And after I finish my review, I will be sending it back to them. And let's start off with the review by going through what configurations this computer can be configured with. Now, first off is its processor. Now, this one here is the AMD Ryzen. So it can actually come in Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and the Ryzen 7. Now, there's also the Pro versions of the Ryzen 5 and 7. Now, what does the Pro version of the Ryzen actually include? There's actually enhanced security features as well as a little bit of better grip quality. Now, there's it is more geared towards businesses because there's also manageability of these computers in a more grand scale of things for the IT department there. Now, as for the RAM wise, it can have a maximum of 16 gigs of capacity. Now that's on two sodium slots there, which is great. So you can upgrade them a little bit later. We should see that in the internal video. As for storage wise, it uses one M.2 slot there. So you can go up to a maximum capacity of one terabyte. As for graphics wise, it uses integrated graphics. Now, the integrated graphics in the Ryzen is actually quite special. It actually uses the AMD Radon Vega 6. So it's actually quite powerful for what it is for the integrated graphics. Compared to a discrete graphics, it doesn't get to that point, but it is does really well. You can even play a few games on this for sure. And it also has Intel Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, as well as a serometer and gyroscope so it's pretty decent you can actually use it for doing other tasks as well as games for that when you've got those gyroscope and also the accelerometers which is great as for display wise it is a 13.3 inch ips display now there are three options that the display can be configured with now the first option is a very interesting one it is a hp shore view privacy screen and that is rated at a thousand nits. That's right, a thousand nits. Now what it is, I don't have it in this particular unit, but to demonstrate to you, but what it does is it's an on-demand privacy screen. It's pretty sweet there. So there is a button which is usually F2. I don't have it in this one as I say, but pretty much if you press that, and it will actually limit the viewing angle to about 70 degrees, which is pretty much straight to the user. So people on the sides can't really see what you're doing. So when you're working off sensitive data, that is fantastic there. So uh, it is great. What well, I actually did see in person, it is absolutely great. And the fact that it can be on demand, it is absolutely brilliant there. Now, I think it is up to version three or for this one here, which is really cool. So they've actually keep improving on that for HP. Option two is another full HD option. And it's just for normal screen, which is rated at 250 nits of brightness. Now, option three is just a brighter version of it and rated at 400 nits. So when you're actually more working outdoors, that's what you'll be choosing. Let's have a look at the ports. So starting on the right hand side, we have a barrel style power adapter port. This is where you can plug in the legacy HP power adapters. And then we have a USB C port. Now this is a USB 3.1 gen two port and it supports power delivery. So this is where you plug in the supply power adapter to charge the computer. And then we have a USB type A port and this is USB 3.1 gen one. And then we have a HDMI port. Now this is version 1.4B. And then we have an audio jack and then a micro SD card reader. On the left hand side, we have a Kensington lock slot. And then we have a USB type A port. Now this is USB 3.1 Gen 1. And it also does power share as well. And then we have the exhaust vent. 
As for the keyboard, it's got a very nice, simple, clean, professional looking keyboard there. And as for the key travel, it's pretty decent there. Yeah, I don't think you'll be complaining about the key travel at all. I actually find it quite nice there. And it's just the sound of the keys. They weren't overly loud, which is great there as well too. Now I do want to make a special mention of two keys on the keyboard there. The first one is the power key. I like the fact that, that HP have placed it right next to the delete key and not actually put it in where the delete key is. They actually put it as the second button in. So that's great there. So you're not actually accidentally hitting the power key when you're just not thinking about it like a programmer. You just go straight for the delete key at the very end there. So it's nice that they put it on the second there. I definitely like that idea. The second mention of the key is the uh, F12. Now F12 is a very interesting key. If I just press that right now, you actually come up, you can see this and it's a customizable key there. So you can actually change that to whatever you feel like. So it's quite nice having a key that you can actually customize to any function you like. Now I just want to bring your attention back to the power button there. Now I have tested it out. People have mentioned asking if the power button works when it's in tablet mode and unfortunately it does not. It does actually disable the power key on the keyboard side when it's in tablet mode. So you won't be able to wake the computer up or turn the computer on and off using the power button when it's in tablet mode there, I'm sorry. As for the trackpad, it is a wonderful size, quite large, but not overly large where it actually becomes a nuisance. And when you actually have your palm on the palm rest and when your fingers are on the home key and you're there typing away, you're not, your palm isn't really on the trackpad there at causing issues there. So I'm ha very happy with the trackpad and its decent size, as well as the feel of the trackpad as well. It's got a bit of a metallic feel to that trackpad there as well. So I actually quite like it. It's actually very smooth as well. This is a new test I'm bringing in. It's called the COVID-19 test. Of course, I've got to get my gloves in. Ah, and let's just see if the mouse will work with my gloves in. Fantastic it does. Oh, great stuff there. So I definitely know that. And we'll just see if the touch screen will work with my gloves. Fantastic, good stuff. So this will work with gloves. Definitely COVID-19 approved. It's got a 720p webcam located on top of the display and HP has integrated our privacy shutter on the webcam. It's just made of a flick of a lever and you'll see a physical shutter go over the lens and pretty much it just blocks the camera if it accidentally turns on. So you don't need electrical tape or blue tack on there anyway, which is great. This is a recording from the 720p webcam and this is the audio and the video as well. And I've left the audio and video unedited in this so you can actually see what it looks like. And I've got a bit of light here from my key light. I'm going to just turn that off so you can see what it looks like and this is my ambient light. So I'll be very interested to see what your thoughts are on that. So comment below on that. I'll turn my key light back on so you can see what it looks like and I'll turn it back off again. So this is just ambient. So definitely tell me how it goes. And as for the keyboard camera here at the bottom here, I was actually very curious on that when I was doing the unboxing. I was wondering what it was, but what it is, is a world facing camera. And so that's where it's in the tablet mode and you can actually use this as a camera there to take photos. And what's really useful is when you're actually doing some scan of documents for PDFs or even just taking a few photos out in the field and just to be able to send them to your emails there. So you don't actually have to use your phone, then send it to your computer. You can actually do it directly from your computer, which is great to actually see a world-facing camera on this. Now it is five megapixels, so it does an all right job in doing your normal photos, but really it's really good for document scanning and just taking your quick photos when you're out in the field so you can send all emails there. Definitely a nice little feature there. The speakers are located on top of the keyboard and when I did the measurement for the speakers at its maximum volume it peaked at 80.5 decibels so that's pretty decent it won't be struggling when it, you're out in the field doing presentations so that's definitely good there as for the sound quality this computer gave me a bit of a shock I was actually quite impressed considering this is a business class laptop it had a bit of bass and the treble was quite nice. It had very nice acoustics as well. Now, when I brought this computer up to maximum volume, 
it did crack a little, but this is a business class laptop. A lot of business class laptops do is very similar there. They don't really generally have very good speakers, but this one definitely gave me a lot of good impressions there. So I was quite happy with the speakers on this computer here. So the weight of the notebook is 1.44 kilos and add the power adapter with it, it becomes a total of 1.79 kilos. As for the build quality of this computer, it is very, very decent. It is an all aluminium chassis here, so the top is at aluminium, the back cover is aluminium, the sides are at aluminium, even the palm rest is aluminium as well. So this can take a lot of beating. It is very, very tough. It has, doesn't even have very much flex on the keyboard as well too. So I'm very impressed by the grill quality of this computer here. HP have not cheaped out on this computer at all. So it can take a fair bit of beating. I really love the construction of this computer here for sure. Uh, I'm very impressed more than like is what I actually say. I'm actually using that word a lot, impressed, because I am very impressed by this computer here. Even the hinge here is brush and aluminum as well too. So very nice. Everything is built to be sturdy and durability. The ProBook 435 comes with a 45 watt hour free cell battery. And when I tested out its battery life, I put it through its four different modes in Windows. So with the best performance mode, I had the computer at 100% load and the screen brightness 100% and it managed to get two hours. So that's really decent there. As for the better battery life, it managed to get two hours and 50 minutes. As for the better battery mode, I did drop the screen brightness to 50% and it managed to get seven hours and 40 minutes. As for the battery save mode, it managed to get 10 hours and 30 minutes. I was actually quite impressed considering my test for battery life is a constant workload. So definitely it did very well in the battery life for me. As for the temperature and fan noise of this computer, when I took the measurements, my ambient temperature was 18 degrees Celsius. We're here in winter here in Australia. So if you're in a more warmer climate, I expect these numbers to go up a little. Now, when I did this test of when for the temperature and noise, I found most of the heat is located near the center of the keyboard, which is unsurprising because that's where the processor sits. I did do my base measurement and when the computer is on idle and the center of the keyboard, which is probably the most hottest part, and it measured at 22 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it was at 31 decibels. So it's actually quite quiet there. Then I put the computer on 20% load. That's pretty much average use. So this is what you'll be doing for office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web, and the hottest part measured at 22.5 degrees Celsius and the fan noise was reading at 32 decibels. And then I put the computer on 50% load and the hottest part read at 26.5 degrees Celsius and the fan noise was at 32 decibels, so still quiet. Then I put the computer at 100% load and the hottest part measured at 33 degrees Celsius and the fan noise was 34 decibels. So it's actually still very, very quiet and still not that heated up at all. Now, when I measured the back cover, it measured at 47 degrees Celsius. Now, but that's, I think, is underneath the grill there. But most of the time, you won't be actually touching that hot around there at all. And I also measured the computer when it was in tablet mode and the screen side measured at 20 8.5 degrees Celsius and as for the keyboard side the hottest area was measured at 35 degrees Celsius. As you can see this computer is very quiet considering it's got active cooling and it doesn't actually get that hot at all. So I'm actually very impressed by this AMD Ryzen 5 in this computer here. It's doing extremely extremely well. So we're testing out the computer for thermal throttling. The process I've got in this computer here is the Ryzen 5 4500U and I've had the computer running for two hours now and the base clock speed for this particular processor is 2.38 gigahertz. Now I can definitely see it's been pretty stable at 3.8 to 3.9 gigahertz for over two hours. That's pretty impressive I've got to say especially at this low fan noise here 
and especially as well as the low temperature on the keyboard there I, I'm pretty pretty impressed there definitely for sure a very stable speed we've got here very high clock speed there so we definitely don't have thermal throttling and even for the turbo throttling it's not that much neither as well too so very impressive let's have a look at the internals so first off you need to remove the eight screws of the back cover and one thing I like to give you a note of is the these screws here at the very top is unthreaded which means they can stay on this and then you can screw all the way and but they will stay with the back cover so you don't actually lose them so I love that design there after that you've got to pry this open now I'm just using my daughter's play-doh scalpel tool it's been very useful in this sort of task here and my tip is to actually try and put the scalpel tool is to pry it open from the hinge find that area after that you'll be able to do that now i've actually pre-undone this one already to make it a lot easier so i can just speed this video up that's all and that's pretty much what the tunnels are so at the moment you can see here is the 45 watt hour battery here now this is a free cell battery and it is held in by four screws so one two three and four and i've pre-undone them there and you don't actually need to disconnect it because as you lift it up which i'm going to do you'll automatically disconnect here which is really nice to do. So we'll just, just I'll just show you what's underneath, what it looks like underneath here. There's not really much to see underneath there. Uh, and I'm just gonna bring this, put this one back down there here as well. Now, you'll probably realize that you can't see much of where the RAM is, and that's because it's actually hidden underneath this little cover here. Now, there is held in by a screw. I've pre-undone the screw already as well. And there's a nice little hole here where you can actually put your finger and then just sort of lift that up. Uh, you just got to pry it open a little bit. It does take a little bit of effort, not, not too much effort, but just a little uh, to bring that open. And then you'll actually see the cover lift up and then you see the two sole dim slots there for you to upgrade the RAM if you need to access the RAM there. Now, same goes with the SSD M.2 slot here. And that's over here. And there's a nice little lever here which you can just lift up and pry that open as well and as you can see there's the one slot of M.2 so you can actually change that hard drive if you want to as well and then we've got the Wi-Fi Bluetooth card here and the presser probably will be more likely sitting right there in the middle there and then with the fan and that's pretty much all you really need to know about the computer for the upgrade wise let's do the line of jitter test here I've got is the HP Pro Pen and it supports up to 4096 pressure levels so I'm just going to do my diagon slow diagonal lines now I'll do my best to do them I'm not a digital artist in any form but I'll do my best to try and do them directly now I'm going to put some a little more pressure there as you can see, straight away see this is already got pressure going so it's actually doing okay is what I think it's doing all right now I'm going to bring in a microfiber cloth in here as well to help simulate the uh, digital artist that actually uses gloves to assist with them so that's how it looks like there and I'm also going to bring in a ruler as well now I'm going to go have one I'm going to try and just do one palm there at the moment oops that's my fault there so this is what it looks like with just the ruler. Now I'm going to put a few more fingers in there. I'll probably put about three or four fingers on there. Hold this ruler straight. And also got the palm as well. So let's have a look what that looks like. That's got a few fingers there. And I'll just do some horizontal lines. So that's all right. I'll do some horizontal lines here as well. Whoops. Kind of looks like there. Now I'm going to bring in a new layer here and I'll do the spiral as well. As you can straight away see, I'm putting a bit of pressure now onto there. It's got this bit of like what I call crystal squish from the old monitors uh, for LCD monitors. You can just kind of see that. Now, this is an IPX screen here, but um it's got this crystal switch, it doesn't harm the screen here, but it's a bit of a thing that you do see that could be a bit of annoyance there. I definitely can see that. I'm going to demonstrate the pen pressure as well better. So light, hard, light, hard, light, hard, light, 
hard line. And I'll just show you, there is a bit of parallax on this, I can definitely see. I'm also going to demonstrate what it looks like as you're writing as well. I want to bring your attention to security. Now this is the first time I'll probably bring this topic up in one of my videos and that's only because HP has very impressed me with their security. Now this is, ProBook is a business class laptop and of course security is very high in the features of a lot of business laptops but this one is very impressive. Now I'm gonna go through now. HP has got about three layers of security. Now the first layer of security is what they call HP Shore Start. Now I'm gonna, I've got the computer turned off for this reason there. So I'm going to turn it on. You actually see short starts turned on. Now what it is, is another dedicated chip to where it actually has some BIOS features there where it actually protects itself from firmware attacks. So it is always constantly running in the background there to actually make sure that it's not being attacked by firmware. If it does, it's able to self heal itself. So you don't even need your IT department to help you do that. It's a very unique type of attack. I have never seen it before, but it is nice to see that HP are thinking way ahead there. They should see the sure start. The next type of security is called HP Sure Sense. Now that is more closer to like your antivirus software. It's to do with anti-malware there. And so it's an application that runs in the OS level and it is able to actually handle that. And the third one is HP Sure Click. Now it is a browser application and you can set it as your default browser, which is probably a good recommendation. Well, I've actually tried it and I really like it as well. So what it does is it's a browser and it's what makes it very different is instead of having your antivirus software running in the background and catch anything, and you do need to train your antivirus software to do that, to find out what's uh, malware or virus before other people report in. But what sure click is as a browser is it creates a micro virtual machine for each tab browser and so if say for example that tab opens up a malware site it will self-contain in that browser and thinks it's a computer and which only contaminate that browser no other thing else not even another tab is contaminated or can be infected and anything outside of that tab browser it doesn't even know it exists it thinks it's a computer within inside that tab there so once you close that tab or even that window it's gone so you don't even have to train anything it's actually a self-containing computer so it's like a sandboxing but it's actually a little bit more advanced than sandboxing but that is pretty amazing i like that hp shortclick do check that out now another software that i was actually pretty impressed that comes with the hp business class laptops is called hp work well and what makes it very different is it's an application driven and what it can do is just give you like exercises when you're actually working so it went just to give you breaks and it actually does have break reminder as well and i also had a quick play it also has things for a feature called sit stand desks so it actually can tell you to remind you to actually take some time routinely to either sit at certain times or stand at certain times and you can actually plug, plug in your your body measurements and it can actually calculate also how much calories you're burning and I also saw a feature where if your stand desk is compatible you can actually have a cable connected directly to your stand desk. Uh, I'm wondering if it can automatically adjust to the stand area or sit down height as you have a routine for that it will automatically do that for you. I'm wondering about that. I have to ask HP about that but that it's pretty impressive that it's actually got all these nice little work features that I don't see with the other brands there. So definitely, I've got to give a win to HP for thinking about all these extra bits of features for commercial and business use. I did run the benchmarks for this computer. Now this particular computer is configured with a Ryzen 5 4500U processor and eight gigs of RAM. So here is the pass mark scores. Citibench R15 and R20, 3D Mark, PC Mark 10, and Spec 
view pref. And Geek Bench. Overall, this computer has very good build construction, very impressive by it as well, and very impressive performance, packed with features as well, and very good security. I just overall I'm blown how impressive this computer here. I would really easily recommend this computer to anyone. I am probably gonna have to be bold to say for 2020, this is the biggest surprise or shock computer for me. It is probably one of my best computer that I've actually held in my hands and review. Definitely, I can easily recommend this HP ProBook X360 435G7 computer for sure. And if you enjoyed this video, find it informative, give it a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel by hitting the subscribe button on the screen, I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.